uh, I want to take a look at the term police brutality and, and maybe offer uh, another term uh, as domestic terrorism, because um, that's what it was in the eyes of George Floyd. And that's what it was in the eyes of Trayvon Martin. And that's what it is in the eyes of a lot of people of color and minority communities uh, on our own soil. So um, I'll be posting an article on my social um, for guys to, to, to learn and, and tune in more. But um, thank you guys for listening. Thank you. All right, questions for Jalen? Go Chris Ryan. Jalen, just along those lines, um, as you've started to you know, evaluate the various aspects of systemic racism and bring your own um, experiences into it, what are the areas you mentioned you know police brutality obviously but what are the area the main areas of reform that you feel need to be taken and why do you think that despite many of these things being brought up over and over again that there has not been the the change that has needed to take place despite a focus on a lot of these issues for a very long time i think it starts with the framework you know um right now there's an enlightenment kind of going on and, and understanding i think i guess amongst our American population. People are now aware that African-Americans in this country have been treated unfairly. I, I, it's, a, it's a surprise to most, but it's not a surprise to me. So I guess it kind of starts with the framework, you know, um, how, you know, this, this country was kind of built on, um, um, starting from slavery to Jim Crow, to separate but equal, to where we're at now kind of has trickled down the effects of systemic racism. And we still have some over, some overbleeds into today's society that you know we can rectify with you know um, policy change. Um, we can rectify with you know um, having you know minority you know um, it's a, it's a lot of places that we can make change. I could get up here and, and, and speak for a while, but uh, the bottom line is that we need to do it and we need to do it now. Question in person, Gary Washburn. So, um, is this time away from family and away from just to allow you to really examine and to study some things when you have so much downtime and you can go to, you can go read or you can go online, you can do research. This last month allowed you to really dig in on that? Oh, for sure. And even being here in this bubble, I also want to, uh, yeah. I also want to bring attention to mental health and awareness. Um, being here in this bubble, I guess, uh, People might not speak on it, but it is a challenge um, to a lot of guys. You know, um, it's like you're at work all the time. Like a lot of time, a lot of guys, when they get done playing basketball, they want to be able to leave and forget about basketball for a little bit. It's impossible here, here in the bubble. Um, you go chill, you might see Donovan Mitchell sitting there and you're like, man, I don't want to see him right now. But <laughs> it kind of is what it is. So I definitely want to uh, bring awareness to mental health, anxiety, and forms of depression. Um, in times like this and, and, and places like this in the bubble, you know, our athletes probably, you know, struggle with that, you know, and don't feel confident enough to be speaking openly about it. Um, so being able to, 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 to talk to somebody, um, being able to, to find ways to, to uh, replace those to replace those tires is it, conversations that need to be had because um, I know the bubble, they make images of pool tables and swimming pools and all this other stuff. Um, it's tough being here, being away from our family, being isolated from the rest of our society. It'd be interesting to see the long-term effects of, you know, being in, you know, this kind of con conservative community. Final question for Jalen, John Corrales. Jalen, you talk about mental health and you're talking about racism <clears throat> in the black community. How difficult is it to get past the stigma that mental health is weakness when you have to be so especially strong when you're dealing with social injustice and these, these racial issues that you're dealing with? Um, it's, that's a great question, uh, John. Uh, I think it's very tough. Um, African-American people are very, very strong people. I mean, we survived slavery, we survived, you know, separate but equal Jim Crow, all, all, all in between. So. A lot of uh, African American males, especially, um, feel like they have to portray masculinity and toughness in these environments, and then sometimes that leads to violence or 
you know, and things like that, just because we got to feel like we got to um, display this, this form of toughness all the time. And, and that, um, that in itself can lead to violence and, and things like that. So um, to answer uh, your second question, I guess, mental health uh, and how that plays into it, it's just being open, you know, having more conversations about it. Uh, people like me, people who have influence uh, and using it and, and making sure that when other guys, you know, see me talking, that they know that they can relate because they might have went through it as well. So um, keep leading that charge. I see Kevin Love has spoken out about it openly, um, DeMar DeRozan, et cetera. And we got to continue to do that because there's people out here that need our help.